All right, guys, so uh, welcome back to TRIG. Um, for those of you who are joining me online, I got three students in the audience here, one of which is uh, this old rascal. His name's Mr. Cooking. He's quite a speed demon, quite a math whiz, quite just an overall bundle of perfection. So expect to be seeing a lot of him uh, in our in our videos today. All right, y'all. So uh, today we're going to segue into talking about graphs. So before that, though, let's recap uh, kind of like our trajectory so far with uh, trig functions. So um, at the very start of this class, we talked about trig functions as uh, well, trig trigonometric expressions as uh, ratios, and we did that involving what kind of shape? A wave. What kind of shape? You know, like adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. Right. Uh, yeah, right triangle. So we thought of you know, trig in terms of you know ratios involving right triangles. But then we moved away from trig expressions, trig ratios, into something called trig functions. And for a trig function, we didn't use right triangles, but rather we used what kind of shape? Or there are two ways to define your trig expressions. Oh, the trig cycle. Yeah, unit circle. Yeah, unit circle. The unit circle gives us powerful way of finding trig values, sine, cosine, tangent, etc., um, of angles not sandwiched in between 0 and 90. For example, we could find sine of 90, sine of 180, sine of 270. Um, and same thing for, for, for cosine, tangent, and, uh, and so forth. So let me get the circle looking a little bit better. It's, it's not great. Right, that's a little bit better. But yeah, involving my unit circle here, we rotated some degree, so some, some amount, counterclockwise called x, and then we this point on the unit circle. What were these two coordinates x and y here? The x coordinate was the cosine value, and the y coordinate was the sine value. Yeah. Specifically, so cosine of what? Goes X. 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 Yes. The amount you rotate counterclockwise goes to your first coordinate, and your second coordinate is the y coordinate. Yeah, which is sine sine of X. X. Sine of X. Yeah. And again, this let us find sine cosine trig values of angles not in between zero and ninety, uh, not inside the right triangle. So now what I want to do is I want to use this unit circle to graph. Let's start with sine. My horizontal axis, I'm going to call this x. So all these angle values here, I'm just going to put them on this x-axis, horizontal axis. And on my vertical axis, I'm going to plot my sine values. So sine of x. All right. First one I want to start, I want to start with the easy bits, the, uh, the axial values, so to speak, the values that are on the vertical and the horizontal axis. So there there, there, and there. These are where the axes touch the circle. So, so help me label these points here. This first point, when I rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, or pi over 2 radians counterclockwise, what is this point going to be? 0 and 1. Exactly, Victoria, 0 and 1. What was the first point? The very first one I started zero, with. 0, 1, and 0. Yeah, 1, one and 0, exactly. All right, then now just moving along the, along the shape, counterclockwise, of course. Minus one and zero. Yes, minus one and zero, and last way to cap it off. Zero minus one. Zero and negative one, precisely. Yep. All right, so those are my uh, easy values. They're my axial values, my boundary values, so to speak. So let me plot them here. So I have a nice zero there. Of course, I have uh, you know four axial values: 90, 180, 270, and 360, or pi. Got to be neat here. So pi over two, then pi, then three pi over two, and then finally two pi or 360. Again, corresponding is nice for uh, axial boundary values. So first point, I'll reload. That's just uh, that's just right there. When x is 0, what's my sine value, my y coordinate? Um, 1, or negative 1. No, when x is 0. So I haven't moved anywhere. I'm still at this point. Right. So my y coordinate is? 0. Yes. Okay. All right. 
And likewise now, when I rotate pi over two counterclockwise, so here's pi over two, that's my x value. Mm -hmm. So when x is pi over two, what's this coordinate here? Uh, one. One. So let's move on up and let's, let's say right there is one. So I'm land right there. And likewise, just to help me out here, let's walk down the line. When I'm at pi, what's my y coordinate? Zero. Zero. Zero, yes. Again, I'm just reading off right. that second coordinate. Now again, coming down at 3 pi over 2, that gives me what for my sine value? Minus 1. Minus 1, precisely. So there we go. And lastly, at pi over 2, sorry, 2 pi. Zero. Alright, I'm back at zero. So, any questions so far? No. Very cool. Now the question is, how do I connect these dots? So, for example, let's go to these three points. That one, that one, that one. How do you all feel about just connecting them like this? No. Is that offensive to you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why is that offensive? It's a color. It should be it's a It's not color. really fluid or continuous. It's quite abrupt. It's abrupt? Okay, well, if it's abrupt, there, however, if you can keep the lines, but then at the very last second, make it a little smooth. Is that better? No. Yeah. Doesn't seem consistent that way, then. Mm, why not? Because, I mean, if you're going to move in a circular motion, you might as well, you need to increase in the first part and then decrease in the second part. Yeah, there needs to be some, some more uh, fluidity, some, some more smoothness to it. You move in a circular fashion, not a linear fashion. Oh, so you're saying it's a semicircle? Yeah. It's a semicircle? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's not, not going to be a semicircle, precisely. So think about this one. Uh, what are some nice values in between 0 and 90? 45. Or 60. 45, 60, another one is? 30. 30? So 45, you know, is right in between 0 and, or pi, pi over 4 is right in between 0 and pi over 2, yes? Mm -hmm. What is sine of pi over 4? Square root of 2 over 2? Yeah. Is that bigger or smaller or equal to 1 half? That's smaller than a half. Yeah, okay, it's root 2 over 2. Root oh, two oh is that's bigger than a half, yeah. yeah it's like yeah. 1.4, give right. or take. 1.4 over 2 is about um, 7 over 10, point seven. Is 7, yeah. So, already at the halfway point, right there, we're going to be kind of up there. Make sense? Yeah. So it's, it's going to be smooth. And you, can, you can fill in uh, the values for 30 and 60, or pi over 3 and pi over 6 if you want. But we're going to have this nice little smooth curve. Smoothly transitions up, smooths out this transition point. And I get the same pattern going down from pi over 2 to pi. Do you agree with that? Because I'm just moving along a circle. If I go from here to here up, from here to here down, then whatever pattern I graph for this first segment has to repeat for this second segment. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that one like um, line that you drew, drew symmetrical um, on both sides? Yeah. Yes, they should be. Okay. Okay. It's, it's hard to draw. It takes practice uh, to draw these well. Right. Um, but yeah, if you want to see a better picture, go to Calculator. There's also this nice website called Desmos.com. And guys, as you're doing this problem, I'd, I'd recommend opening, the, opening that up in a different tab. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're doing problems, just you know, type problems in to check your answers and see a much nicer graph of these. So, um, this pattern just repeats from here to here. I'm going along this circle, so, or that part of the circle. So I get, let's see here. Yeah. All right, you'll have to forgive my drawing. It's not the greatest, but... Let's try it again. Smooths out. And smooths back in. Like so. Okay, I, mean, I think, I think it gets the job done. Uh, Alright, so that's how you draw it between uh, 0 and 2 pi. 0 and 360. Alright, but you, I could keep going on and on forever, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, say, 450 degrees. Go 360, then go another 90. Um, but what's, what's that going to be? What's sine of 450 degrees? It's going to be 1 again. Yeah, it's going to be 1. Same as pi over yeah. 2. So if I wanted to extend this a little bit more... If 
four fifty or five pi over two, you know, it's just going to keep it. It's going to keep going on and on, and this pattern is going to repeat forever to the right. All right, what about uh, to the left? What if I have negative values? So you know, remember for um, for the right triangle definition of my trig function, we couldn't have negative angles, right? That just didn't make any sense. But that's another benefit of the unit circle. We can define negative angles, just you know, clockwise rotation as opposed to counterclockwise. So, for negative pi over two, what would I do? You'd go um, 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. Right, and I would land at which Y coordinate if I did that. Negative one. Yeah. So I go from here to negative one. I'm traveling along the circle in the same sort of fashion as I did in the previous uh, previous four qu uh, quarter circles. So I get this. Yeah, and so the pattern just repeats. On and on and on. Forever. Left and right. So uh, in a nutshell, that's the graph of sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, any questions? Just to clarify, that 3 pi over 2 is supposed to be negative 1, right? Yes, it is okay. supposed to be a negative 1. So let's, let's see if I can align this better here. There. Right at negative 1. Then you might need to fix the negative pi over 2 then, but it's OK. Yeah, that's true. So let's see. Yeah, hard to draw. All right, so that is the graph of sign. It's a nice, smooth thing. It goes on and on forever, left and right, same pattern. But uh, as you all know from, uh, well, actually, let's do one more thing. How about now, instead of graphing sine, let's graph uh, here in, in green, let's graph cosine. So someone tell me, when, when uh, my angle value is zero, what is my x-coordinate? Y. Yes. When my angle value is pi or two, what's my x-coordinate? Zero. When the angle value is pi? Minus one. Minus one, yes. Three pi over two? Zero. Zero, and finally two pi? One. One, yes. And again, I'm traveling along the circle. So the same, you know, gradient that we got for cos and that we got for sine is going to repeat. So for sine, is going to repeat for cosine, like so. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it the exact same oh, as right. sine, but just shifted like pi over two to the left or pi over two to the right? Right. It's just a graph of sine shifted pi over two to the left. Or to the right. Yep. Nice. So, graph of sine, graph of cosine, simple shapes from around. But I want you guys to really focus on this first quadrant, or this first section here, from 0 to 2 pi, for both sine and cosine. Mm -hmm. So, 0 to 2 pi from sine looks like this, a nice little wave. And for cosine, looks like this. Starts at 1, dips a little bit, and then pops right back up. So we've got a nice wave for both. Mm -hmm. Sine wave and cosine waves. All right, any questions at all? All right, but as you all know uh, from pre-calculus, from foundations, um, graphing isn't this simple. Of course, we have you know, nice uh, you know, parent functions or prototype functions, but then they can undergo things like vertical compression, vertical stretching, horizontal compression, horizontal stretching, then vertical shifts and horizontal shifts. So uh, sh shifting, stretching, compression in all directions, vertical and horizontal. So this is where uh, you see on your, on your sheet two equations for sine and cosine. And you, know, and you have these capital A's, B's, and C's, and D's in there. And uh, in turn, I'm going to explain all these mean. But the first thing I want you to do, I want, to, I want you to make a correction to your, into your sheet. For sine and cosine, you see A sine bx plus c plus d, right? bx plus c parentheses plus d. Yeah. I want you guys to change that plus sign in the parentheses to a minus. But keep the plus sign next to the d. The reason I'm doing this is uh, the, all the problems in your book have the minus sign here. 
And in most textbooks, you'll see a minus sign here. So just to avoid any uh, potential confusion, I want to keep the same notation as the book. So that's for sine and likewise for cosine. Yeah, just a word change. Dx minus C plus D. And you want us to change that minus sign on that one as well? Yes. OK. Plus gets changed to minus. All right. Now, again, I'm just going to explain all these names in turn. But for now, uh, let's look at this first one as a representative. I want you guys to change this, these parentheses further. So again, there's nothing wrong with this, but I can rewrite this first statement as this. If I factor out a b from everything, I get b all times x minus c over d. All right. I'm sorry, c over b. And I got that plus d hanging out. At the end. And now, likewise, for this. So again, have this equation written down somewhere in your notes or on that paper. And it's these two final forms, so to speak, that are going to be really useful when it comes to graphing these more complicated expressions. So, I think right below that you see uh, four, four terms, amplitude, phase shift, period, and vertical shift, yes? Um, yes. All right. All right, the amplitude of any of these graphs, whether it's the sine or the cosine one, that's just defined to be the absolute value of A. You can think of this as your vertical stretching and compressing factor, OK? Likewise, uh, oh, let's see here. Um, the period, again, I'll talk about the, more about what that means here in a second. We're going to define that to be 2 pi divided by this b value. Next, I have what's called my phase shift, or my horizontal shift. The phase slash horizontal shift. Okay. Any reason why it's called phase instead of just horizontal? Um, it's, it's a word that, I mean, phase shifting is a word that comes up a lot in uh, physics okay. and engineering, with the phase um, difference between two waves. So we see how in phase, out of phase they are with each other. Ah, okay. um, but yeah, any ideas for what this quantity would be? Why are you defining period as 2 pi over b? It should be 2 pi, right? No, no, no. Because I mean, it was 2 pi for uh, the first two we did. But there are going to be some waves that are more compressed, more waves, some waves that are stretched. And the period's not going to be 2 pi for those. But we'll talk more about period in a second. So um, let's. Uh, Let's pick up here. So the horizontal shift, would that just be C over B? Yes, exactly. It's going to be C over B. And finally, any idea what your vertical shift would be? Just be D, right? Yes. It's just that quantity D. Yeah, it could be a negative value, but it could be positive too. Just have those in your notes for now. We'll uh, piece together what those mean in more detail in a second. But let's, uh, let's start with the simplest two kinds of transformations, which uh, in my opinion are going to be uh, the vertical shifting and the vertical stretching and compressing. All right. So, so just to keep things a little simple here, I'm just going to sketch out one uh, part of the sine wave. Here's y equals sine of x. And suppose I get this. One, two, like that. Max value is one, and of course the smallest value for sine is negative one. Yeah, negative one. Zero. So I'm going to where does this first wave, the first part of this wave, hit the x-axis? Um, pi. Pi and two pi. Oh, this was called one period, one repetition of the wave, but we'll talk more about period in a second. So if I take this graph and let's say I multiply every y value in the original by, let's say, 2. What does this graph look like? What happens if I multiply this first value, this 0 y value by 2? It'll still be 0. Yeah, it's still going to be 0. That's it. 1, 2, 1, 2. Negative 1, negative 2. That's still going to be 0. But what if I multiply the y value corresponding to 
to an x coordinate of pi over 2, which is a y value of 1. What happens when I multiply this maximum y value by 2? 2. Yeah. So now my max value isn't 1. It's 1 times 2, which is 2. 2. Again, here where it touches the t-axis, the x-axis, sorry, that's 0 again. If I multiply 0 by 2, I still get... Zero. Zero. Zero, yes. Minus two. Yes, exactly. So we're going to have this pattern where the wave just gets stretched and reaches a max value, so I can free of the drawing, reaches a max value of positive two, and the new minimum value is negative two. Oh, yes. but that repetition still occurs from zero to two pi. Does it make sense? And again. Just for brevity, I stopped the wave at one repetition. But again, this wave is going on forever and ever, left and right. And same deal for this wave. So that's an example of a vertical uh, stretch. All right. What if I take that prototype function, that parent function, and let's say I add 1 to every single y value. So, all the y values of the original for this graph. Let's see what happens to this. If I take 0 and I add 1 to it, what's my new value? 1. 1, yes. If I take uh, 1 and add 1 to it, I get 2. 2, yes. So let's see, just to be symmetric. If I take my minimum value, I'm sorry here, negative 1, and I add 1 to it, I get 0. 0, yes, exactly. There I am. And uh, we still need to do the um, 3 pi over 2 value, right? Yeah, so actually that's what we just did. 3 pi over 2 was there. Added uh, 1 to 0, I get here. And finally, the 2 pi value, when I add uh, 1 to that, I get uh, 1. 1, yes. So, what happened? Should take the whole thing out. Yeah, just take the whole thing and uh, sling it up, just one unit, and you're good to go. So, this entire thing got pushed up one. So, any questions so far? So these two things, vertical stretching, vertical uh, shifting, they're your easiest alterations, I feel. And when you guys are doing some more complicated graphing, I want you to save those for the very end. Okay, don't do the easy uh, alterations at the beginning. Do the hardest ones first, and then throw on your uh, easy ones, your vertical shifting and vertical uh, compression or stretching. So, so we just did amplitude and vertical shift, okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, let's see here. Let's move on to some horizontal considerations now. Let's see what happens if I try to graph y equals sine of 2x. So think about this in the context, again, of the prototype, of the original. If I'm taking sine of 2 times some value, when do I hit zero again for my first instance here? So, of course, you start at zero for sine, but rather than me hitting zero again at pi, I'm going to hit zero at what value? Pi over two. Right, because two times pi over two is pi and sine of pi is zero. So everything that happens here for the, in the original just, gets, uh, just happens again, just at a more uh, rapid pace. So to speak. So let's see. So going down here, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So I hit 0 for the first time, not at pi this time, but at pi over 2. I hit it for the second time where? At pi. Yes. Third time? 3 pi over 2? Yeah. 
And fourth time at two pi. Two pi, exactly. Uh, when's the first time I hit a, get a y value of one? If I get a y value of one in my original, I'd pi over two. Then what's the first time I'm gonna get it for sine two x? Pi over four. Right, because two x equals pi over two and x is pi over four. So let's just put one of them in here, you know, pi over four. And so I get the same thing. But it just happens in more, uh, at a greater frequency. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So there's one, there's negative one. And you have the same min and, min and max values, but they happen at a greater, at a greater frequency. It looks like it's going twice as fast. Or yeah. Yeah, track yeah, you can think of it that way. Think of it as you know, it's going twice as fast. Right. It's more, uh, more compressed. Um, now, if this if this number here wasn't a two, if it was like one half, one third, how would the graph look like then compared to the original? If it was one half, it would go twice as slow. Right. It would just be the original, but stretched out. Does that make sense? So stretching, compressing, vertical and horizontal possibilities. All right. And let's look at one more. The graph of y equals sine of this time not x. But let's say x minus say x minus pi. I just say x x minus pi over two. Now for this one again, you can fall back just on your knowledge from uh, pre calc foundations. This is going to represent what kind of shift? A uh, horizontal shift. All right, horizontal shift uh, of pi over two unit. Now to the left or to the right? To the right. Right. To make this zero, I need x to be positive pi over two. So positive pi over two, shift it on over to the right. So this thing just gets shifted like that. So, pi over two, and I get a nice little sign wave. Of course, again, it goes on forever, left and right, and it still has min and max values of one and negative one, respectively. So at zero, would it be negative one? Yes, at zero, it would be negative one. Okay. Good. All right, now just to get some familiarity with these, with A, B, C, and D values, um, those are the graphs of these things. So for example, for this thing, Y is equal to two sine of X. What's my A value? Two. Yeah, A we define that to be, uh, A is two. So the amplitude is the absolute value of two, or just two. Okay. Now onto this graph, I want to look at uh, another kind of, uh, another kind of transformation, which isn't a stretching or a compression, but it's a reflection. What, what would the graph of Y equals negative two sine of x look like. In other words, every single y value that you see here just gets multiplied by what? Two. Negative one. Yes, by negative one. So of course, zero times negative one stays at zero, but then positive two times negative one gives you? Negative two. Negative two, so it's just, what happens to this graph in general? It's flipped over the x-axis. Yes, it's just a perfect reflection <laughs> over the x-axis. Like that. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. So really, again, uh, that was one uh, kind of transformation I left off at the beginning. So we had stretching, compression, vertical, horizontal, shifting, horizontal, and vertical. Uh, you also have uh, reflections. So bear that in mind. All right, y'all. Any questions so far? Again, all the stuff that we did here for this y equals sine of x carries over for cosine. As well. Okay. All right. I want you to look at your sheet now. And uh, let's see here. Go ahead and sketch a graph for part A. But again, you want to also determine the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift before you do the graph. So I want you to do part A and then do part B. 
And uh, have a go at that for uh, two or three minutes. I'll say three minutes. Plus. All right, so picking back up, uh, someone tell me what was the function that we wanted to graph for part A? Point A is y equals three times sine of x. All right. Well, for this one, we've pretty much already done it. We did one on the board earlier with uh, y equals two sine of x. So what's the only difference between that one and this one? The amplitude is three instead of two. Yes. So our new maximum value is three. What's my new minimum value? Negative three. Negative three. Um, but yeah, again, I still start at zero. I still hit uh, the x-axis again at pi. My minimum value still occurs at three pi over two, and my z next zero value occurs at two pi. Again, it just uh, gets stretched vertically. And you hit the maximum value at um, pi over two, right? Yes. So that should be on there. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So like this, again, three of the artistic uh, challenges here. But um, yeah, get the idea. Now this problem also wanted me to find a few things before I graphed it. Right? Amplitude. Three. Right. So again, amplitude is always the absolute value of your A value, which is three. Period, which we'll talk about here in a second, that's divided to be 2 pi over b. What is my b value for this problem? Then what, what number do you see out in front of x? 1. one. Right. It's an understood 1. 2 pi over 1 or just 2 pi. Um, and what's the other things I wanted to find? Phase shift, yes? Yes, phase shift. All right. So we can just say so that's ps, phase shift. Why well, was my phase shift? Zero. Or horizontal shift, yeah. There's no c value. And likewise, my vertical shift. Do you see a d value there? No, so it's zero. Zero, yes. All right, let's talk about what two pi means here for a second. For period. So, were I to continue this, you know, forever and ever, left and right, I get the same sort of repetition, right? To the right, I get the same sine wave. To the left as well, if I want to continue that. So what I'm really interested in is how often does this one wave, does this one cycle, does this one repetition repeat? How often does that happen? Well, I can specify that in terms of my horizontal axis. Yes? Yeah. Yes, okay. So I get one repetition every how many horizontal units from there to there? Two pi. Right. From zero to two pi is two pi. Um, any guesses for what that's going to be? Four pi. Four pi. With two yeah. pi segment, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that coordinate there is four pi, so that repeats two pi. Again, to the right of that. To the left of that, it's going to repeat uh, up until negative two pi, and on and on and so forth. So that's what period means. It's a measurement of how frequent, how frequently do your cycles occur. So let's, uh, let's go on to that a little harder example. So someone uh, help me out here, what was that function? Y equals negative two cosine of x over three, or one third x. Cosine of one third x? Yes. Okay. Victoria, are you paying attention there? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. All right, with these guys, I want you to do these more complicated ones. Make a note of this. Do it in bite-sized pieces. All right? Start with the parent function, start with your prototype, and work your way to this one step at a time. And the order I want you to do it in is like this. First, I want you to do I want you to do your horizontal compression. In other words, graph cosine of one third x. Now this problem doesn't really deal with it. But after you do horizontal compression, I want you to do horizontal shifting. And then lastly, third or fourth, um, this one doesn't really matter too much as far as the order goes. Do your vertical shifting and compression. So 
vertical shifting, vertical compression. So what's the difference between horizontal compression and vertical compression? Well, horizontal compression is uh, when you increase your frequency, oh, for example. Gotcha. And then we're like an accordion, yeah? stretch it out, push it in. That's, that's what you're doing to these nice sine waves here. In other words, you can stretch them out, so you should realize you should compression slash stretch. And also we have to take into account vertical reflection. We can save these for the end. Should we do if these yes. steps before we find our amplitude period in PS and VS or after? Uh, that doesn't matter. You can uh, you can find these before you start graphing. You can find these after because these are purely numerical computations. Okay. All right. You don't really need these to do the graph. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start. Uh, I should have said that here. Let's start with our parent function. And starting with that par par parent function, then you do the adjustments in this order. Okay? Hey, you, pay attention. All right. All right, so what is my parent function for this, this mess here? Cos x. Yes. Y equals cosine of x. And I'm just, again, just uh, focus on one period, the nice, you know, period in the first and fourth quadrant. I have this nice little uh, dipping action going up there. Starts at zero, that period, and ends at, for that repetition, and ends at two pi. Yes? Yes. And I get a positive one and negative one. See, always start out with your prototype. Mm -hmm. And so it's the compass to guide you through these problems. All right, what is my first step? Do I have some uh, horizontal compression or stretching going on? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes, any time you have a B value that isn't one, you're gonna have some compression or stretching in the horizontal direction. So let's look at the graph of y equals cosine of one third x. What's that gonna look like? What's my period? The period is one third, right? Yeah, so actually, I, I kinda lied earlier. For this one, it would help a little bit to have your period computed beforehand. So, my b value is one third, yes? Yes. So my period is gonna be what? 2 pi times 3. Yeah, 2 pi all over 1 third, which is 2 pi times 3, which comes out to be a nice... 6 pi. 6 pi. So, so it takes 6 pi to complete one cycle. Right, so if you want, you can, uh, you know, you don't have to draw it stretched out, exaggerated too much if you want. You can just draw it in the same manner, like so. It's just that when I label these, so zero to two pi and you know, pi in the middle, how do I need to alter those points there and there? Call the point in the middle. Pi and six pi. Yes. So it takes a full period to have that cycle. So it's a period of six pi to have this cycle. And the middle there becomes three pi. Yes? Yeah, good job, good job team. And we have one and negative one, again. And the last thing we gotta do is just take this thing and, uh, well, let's do two things. We got some vertical uh, stretching going on, right? Anytime we have an A value that's not one, we're gonna have some vertical compression or stretching or reflection. So let's look, let's look at the graph of Y equals two times cosine of this. So I take this graph and I do what to all the y values? Uh, multiply by two. Yeah, multiply by two. So again, if you want, you can keep the same. Actually, no, I'm gonna draw this one a bit accurately. You know it's negative two, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make that adjustment here. So. Okay. So for y equals two times cosine of one third, same sort of graph, again, stops at, or one period is uh, six pi, a three pi corresponds to the new minimum value for this. And I got this graph here, these max points and min points of two and negative two. All right, so if I want to graph 
this is a different color here, negative 2 cosine of 1 third x. Reflect it. Over which axis? Reflect over x axis. Of course, yeah. Reflect it over the x axis in a perfect way. And, and there we go. This thing in green is the graph of the original. And I want you to notice how, how much easier it was to do things in this step-by-step, -step linear manner. Okay? If you just start off with this and start, you know, start plugging in value, it's going to be a very uh, messy experience for the most part. Especially if we, start, if we have like C values and D values, which we didn't have for this problem. So uh, imagine you know, some of the problems we're reading in the future here, or in a second actually. Where we have C and D values, those are problems you can't just look at and figure out. You gotta work with it piece by piece. All right, so the last problem of the day I want you guys to do is, uh, is part D. Problem number, problem, problem letter D. Again, follow this outline, you know, start with the parent function, do the horizontal compression stretching, do shifting, and then do your vertical stuff. So uh, yeah, have at it for about four or five minutes. All right, y'all. So just picking back up here. So this uh, this thing wants us to graph one half times cosine of what was it? Two uh, x plus pi. Two x plus pi. Yes. Hey guys, I apologize. I forgot to do this in the last problem, part B. But again, here this problem wants us to right off the bat find amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift. So let's you know, before you do graphing or anything like that, let's just uh, let's get these values. What is my amplitude? One half. Yeah, absolute value of positive one half is positive one half. What is my uh, what's my period? Two, two pi over two. Two pi over two, which comes out to be pi. Yes. All right. What about my phase shift, my horizontal shift? So for this, you might have to rewrite this guy. Like so. One half cosine. And what do I do to these first two terms? You um, factor out a two. Yeah. Factor out a two. So it's two times x plus pi over two. But then what do I got to do this plus sign in here? Sign in there. Yeah, remember the form that you want to put it in before you you know deal with these computations is a times cosine of bx minus minus c. So minus or b c. all times x minus some stuff. So I need a minus sign in that parenthesis. Okay. So be two times x minus negative pi over two. Yeah. Negative pi over two. Parentheses. Parentheses closed. One more. One more. And do I have a D value? No. no. All right. So now I can clearly see my A, B, and C values. Well, there's my A. There's my B. What did this guy come out to be? How we? How do we label that at the beginning? Um, C over B. Yes, C over B. And C over B is my what? Um, phase shift. Exactly. So nice. Uh, negative pi over two. That is my phase shift. All right, and uh, vertical shift. We have so D value. Yeah. So no. All right. So that's it for the com computations for those four things. Yeah. When you graph these. When they're more complicated, start off in bite size pieces. Or do bite size pieces. So, start off with your parent function for cosine. Got a nice little wave like that. Positive one, negative one. Hands off here at two pi. Nice pi in the middle. What's the first thing I want to do? What's my first transformation? Um, horizontal compression? Yes. First stuff is always the horizontal stuff, and the first of the horizontal stuff is your horizontal compression. 
So for compression, you always look at the B value. So I want to look at Y equals cosine of BX, cosine of that B value times X, like so. And with horizontal compression, horizontal stretching, I want to look at which of those four quantities? Um, the B value, right? Yeah, the B value, and you, we use the B value to compute some stuff over there. The period. Yes, I want to look at the period. The new period is how much for this guy? Um, 2 pi over, just pi? Yeah, again, it's uh, 2 pi over the B value, but it just comes out to be pi again. Even though it doesn't look like this, um, the period's still 2 pi. So, period's pi. So, there's my wave. You can draw it the same way if you want. Max value of positive 1. Minimum value of negative 1. But what's the difference? Um, it's twice as compressed. So instead of 2 pi at the end, it'd just be pi at the end. Yeah. This would be a pi. This would be a pi root 2. Like so. Yes? Yeah. All right. That takes care of my horizontal compression. Next, I want to look at my horizontal what? Um, Remind me. Yeah. What do I want to do next? Horizontal shift. Yeah. Look, uh, after you've done horizontal stretching and compressing, the only thing you have left to do horizontally is the shifting. So I take this guy. I don't need that arrow there. I just draw it next to this. So it's a space. I want to look at cosine of 2. But now all times the stuff in the set of parentheses here. So 2 all times x minus negative pi over 2. So again, whatever you see in this set of parentheses on here is what you do for this part when you're doing your horizontal shifting. So I am uh, taking this graph and doing what to it? The only, the only difference is instead of 2 times x, it's 2 times this stuff. 2 times some uh, shifting factor. You would move it pi over 2 to the left? Yes. Pi over 2 to the left. So, for example, this point here, at pi over 2, negative 1, that point on this new graph is going to be where? At the y-axis. Yes. Hey, you, pay, pay attention. No, no cell phones. Put that away. All right. All right. So pi over 2. Shift to pi over 2 to the, to the left. Gets placed right there. Now you, where does uh, where does this point get shifted? I'm shifting pi over two to the left. Pi over two oh, came to zero. Over pi over two. Yes, this comes here. Again, the entire shape of the graph gets is, is preserved. It just gets shifted. So now I draw those points. There, there's my pi over 2, there's my pi, there's positive 1, there's negative 1, uh, let's see, what, what, anything else? All right, let's do one more point. Where does this point? Just 3 pi over 4, where does that get taken? That's going to be shifted to just pi over 4. Yes. Right there. Damn, it's a nice symmetrical scenario. So 3 pi over 4. Uh, pi over 4. Gets taken there. So. My new graph looks like this. For one period, it looks like that. Yes? Yes. Hang on, let's, we'll, be, we'll be able to complete here. Max value is still 1, because my amplitude is still 1. And minimum value is negative 1, because again, amplitude is still 1. All right, final step is I just take this guy and I do what to it? Um, you multiply it all by a half. Right. So the only thing I need to change is uh, my max and min values. 
And so my max value being one, it becomes what? One half. Yeah, one half. And so my minimum value being negative one becomes negative half. Negative half. Yeah, we keep the same shape, so pi over four to pi over two to three pi over two. Th sorry, three pi over four to pi. Same deal here. And we get this. Okay. So that's the graph of one period of this function. Sketch. Good. Does that make sense? Yes. Do we, do we feel good about life? Good job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? No. No? All right, so again, this stuff takes a good bit of practice. Um, so I want you all to uh, finish up the problems on the sheet and I'll post uh, solutions online. Um, in addition to that, I want you to do the problems that are on Canvas. So you got, we got a quiz, quote unquote, homework. It has a lot of problems with these. So in the next uh, day or two, uh, try to get those done. I mean, they're due by the end of the week, but I want you guys to do them as soon as possible to get some practice under your belt. All right, uh, we'll pick up here uh, next time though.